Hey, I'm Daree Allen Nieves, and in this video, I'm going to talk with you about three ways that you can find work as a voice actor. The three main ways that you can find jobs as a voice actor are one, online casting sites, which are also called pay to plays, direct marketing, self marketing, and with talent agents. Online casting sites are a way that people usually start with voice acting if they have no previous acting experience, don't really know anything about the industry or whatever. They're just wanting to work from home, looking around on the internet, searching sites, trying to figure out where they can do voiceover. And so um, they're called pay to plays, P2Ps, because pretty much whenever you go to a site like this, not only do you create a profile and upload demos and samples of your voice and tag your voice, but you also have to pay them. <laughs> you have to pay anywhere from two, three, four hundred dollars a year um, in order to be a part of their website. So in essence, you are paying for the privilege to get those auditions. You are paying for jobs that you might not even get. When you create the profile, they're going to ask not only for voice samples, but they're also going to ask you to describe your voice. So does your voice sound authoritative? Does it sound light? Maybe you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, but you sound like a child. So whatever kind of descriptive attributes that you can put on your profile, file to explain what your voice sounds like in words. Sometimes it's kind of difficult, but I think one of the best ways to figure this out is not just to think about the way you think your voice sounds, but to ask people. You read something, you know, read something short, read a few different types of things and um, ask your friends, family and colleagues what they think about when they hear your voice. Like, what does it sound like? And you can do it on video, but it's best to just do a quick MP3, um, a quick recording on your phone or whatever, just or maybe SoundCloud or something, just so that they can hear what you sound like and critique you. I've been in different challenges, free challenges, where um, this was done with everyone in the class, and it was very helpful to get descriptors from those people. Um, if you ever decide to do voiceover for real and you hire a coach, they also will talk with you about what they think your voice sounds like. And if you start to get buyers of your voice or people that like your sound, they also will be able to tell you, this is why I like your sound. This is what you sound like. You know, you sound friendly, conversational, warm, authoritative, clear, believable, whatever the words are that fit your type. And this is helpful because when you get auditions, like I talked about in the last video about auditioning, you want to audition for things that actually fit your type. It's no different from being an actor. There's a lot of people that say when they do on-camera acting that they want to play against type because sometimes people look at them and they immediately assume, oh, this is the bad guy, this is the girl next door, whatever that type is that they fit in. And you might see an actor in various different types of TV shows and films playing those same roles. And that's because they have a type that they do really, really well. Um, and it's not very different from voiceover. You can do many things if you have the skill to do them, but a lot of people have a set type, a uh, set voice type that they um, get cast for the most. There are many different online casting sites slash pay to plays out there. Um, there are some that are very popular like Voices.com, Voice123. There's several, several sites. And usually when you type in voiceover, those websites have the top, you know, four or five listings in Google or whatever internet search tool you're using. Um, but they're not all created equal. Some of them have good business practices and that are ethical to not only the buyers, but also the talent. And some don't. Some take fees and don't disclose it to the buyers or the talent. Um, and there's lots of different types of business practices, just like any other industry. So it's best to do your research to figure out which sites you want to be affiliated with, where you want to have profiles, where you want to spend your money, um, as opposed to just going with what everyone else says is popular as far as online casting sites for voice. The second way, and this is the way that I get a good 80, 85% of my jobs is self-marketing. Um, that means you're doing the legwork. So this is one of the more effort intensive things to do because you're not sitting around just waiting for auditions to come in after you do a profile, but you're seeking those buyers that are out there and you're letting them know, hey, I exist. 
And there's some really great ways that you can do that. Um, if you have a voiceover website, you know, you can be found uh, via SEO because you have um, different keywords and things on your website and people find you organically, which is like the best, right? Because you're not really doing any effort other than what you've already put in with your SEO and updating your site regularly. Um, but with self-marketing, you're going out there, you're cold calling or you're emailing or both um, different potential buyers that use the types of voiceovers that you do. When you're doing this, they're going to want to hear samples of your work. So it's best to do it when you have a demo um, or two um, that is relevant to what they do. So if you have an e-learning demo, but you're targeting a company that does, you know, it's an ad agency and they do commercials, they probably aren't going to really care about your e-learning. I'm going to go on a limb and say that they don't care. Um, and the same thing, production houses, you know, they care about certain types of VO and not others. So it's important to tailor your marketing to just like any other marketing strategy. Who is it that you're talking to? What do they need and how can you serve them? And most likely they will not respond the first, second or even third time that you email them or you cold call them. They might respond by the third time, but don't be surprised if they don't. They probably get a lot of inquiries and um, they may or may not just come right out and say, hey, you know, we're busy or we don't need you or we don't do that. Um, but it's not the worst thing in the world that they do. You know, if there's somebody that's not interested in what you have to do, then that's cool because now you can stop contacting them and move on to those people that actually need you. The third and final way, um, the most exclusive of the three that I'm talking about here, um, are talent agencies. And there's different types of talent agencies. Some uh, just do, you know, modeling and on-camera acting only. Some have voiceover departments. Some are national agents that cover, you know, like let's say that they're based in L.A., or New York or Chicago, you know, those are most likely national agencies. Um, and then there's some that are regional, which is pretty much everywhere else. Um, and there are pros and cons to being on either of those. I'm not going to get into all that here because as a beginning, a person that's beginning in voice acting or someone that's just trying to get information about voice acting, um, I can pretty much say that you're not going to be able to get on a talent roster um, that's going to uh, give you auditions that you would not see like 99% of the time you're not going to see these same auditions on a pay to play site um, they're exclusive um, for talent agents and um, it's just that some agency some ad agencies production houses some networks on tv and film they don't want to go through regular talent channels like just out there they want someone that's vetted that they know this person really truly is a talent they they can go they can get the job done and so they go through uh the voiceover departments of talent agencies to do this if and when you decide to be represented uh, regionally or nationally by a talent agent they should not be charging you to be on their roster um, I remember this one particular agent in Atlanta, my daughter uh, wanted to do modeling and people would always talk about, you know, to me like, hey, you know, you should really get her into modeling. She's a beautiful girl. You should do this. You should do that. And it was the toughest thing. Um, and there's a couple in particular, I won't name them, but, you know, there's there's scams everywhere. Right. And uh, I fell for it. Unfortunately, this was probably like, I don't know, 10 years ago. Um, and they wanted a certain fee in order to be listed on their website and things like this. And, um, you know, she didn't get auditions. She didn't, you know, get, you know, casting sent to her. Well, really it was through me because she was under the age of 10 at the time. Um, and so you have to make sure that your eyes are wide open when you do decide to go with agencies so that you are not getting played because there's people out there in any industry that are ready to take your money for nothing. I go into these different ways to find work and things you have to do in my new Vocality e-course, which is launching in March of 2020. And so if you're interested in that, if you're interested in getting emails when the launch goes live and even the Facebook challenge that's going to accompany it, there's a five-day Facebook challenge, um, I invite you to sign up at bit.ly slash vocality dash ecourse. And if you don't have my resource guide, I've talked about it in previous videos, but maybe this is the first time that you're watching me. And so if you need the resource guide, get yeah. that from bit.ly slash Deree voiceover resource. I hope this was helpful to you to give you a quick overview of ways to find work as a voice actor. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.